Now, getting back to this diagram that I showed you just a few minutes ago, the important thing to understand about how 10 level 9 fits in with this is that it's basically a driver that we provide that lets you talk, that lets the 10 runtime talk to 9 hardware. Okay? So that's all it is. But going back a few more slides, like there was this whole thing with caps, right? And so all these cards had, had different capabilities. And so we wound up with this sort of ecosystem of all these different capabilities that the cards had, and it's represented by the starfish and the jellyfish and the sharks up here. So how are we somehow going to take all those different capabilities and yet make them work with this cleaner, sort of leaner API? And the idea is that we're going to bucketize these features into three big buckets called feature levels, and that's what you're going to target. So let's talk a little bit more about these feature levels. Feature level is basically a modification to the create device call that allows the D3D10 device to be created with flags that uh, specify the desired feature level. So now, and you'll see a code sample of this in a minute, so if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't panic. Um, so now the create, devol create device call has been modified to let you know what level of device you want to create. And if you try and create a device that has functionality greater than the card you actually have, uh, the create device will fail. Okay, so it'll fail if any of the features in the specified feature level are not supported. So you can't somehow, uh, unless you don't check for errors, but you can't mistakenly create the wrong level of device. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're going from hundreds of these caps bits, maybe thousands, I never actually checked, but lots and lots of caps bits certainly, which is this very fine grain control to three levels, which is coarse but manageable control. And the three levels here are feature level 9 underscore 1. This is the lowest feature level. 9.2, which is slightly better, and 9.3, which is, has slightly more features. So looking at this again, uh, these are the kinds of cards or graphic support that we have in feature level 9.1, and it supports shader model 2.0. So the point of this slide is just to give you a general feeling for the different feature levels. Feature level 9.2 is also shader model 2.0. It has some slight difference in features, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. And there you can see some cards for feature level 9.2. And feature level 9.3 supports shader model 3.0. All this is, is going to be documented, so don't feel like you have to be scribbling this down. This isn't complete anyway. The important thing to realize, though, is that each feature level is a superset of the one below it. So feature level 9 underscore 2 has all the functionality of 9.1 plus some more stuff. Feature level 9.3 has all the functionality of 9.2 and 9.1 plus some more stuff. Um, so this is an example of just some of the, the differences between 9.1 and 9.2. Like you can see max volume extent is, is slightly different and these kinds of things. It's not a complete list. It's actually a fairly good one, but not a complete list. But Again, the idea here is just to give you an idea about the differences between these feature levels. So now some of you are sitting there saying, you lied to me, right? You said you were getting rid of those caps. Isn't this just caps? Well, not really, because again, the idea is that the feature levels are much more simplified, right? And again, we're going from these hundreds of caps, this ultra fine grain control, to much more coarse but manageable control with three levels. Okay. So hopefully, you're sitting out there and you say, okay, this seems nice. We've got the benefits of 10 hardware. This, you know, coding to a simpler API, coding to a simpler, cleaner API where I kind of really know how things are going to look. It's on the 9 hardware, right? So I broaden my reach. But if you're like me, this kind of talk, I don't know, it's, it's sort of hard for me to focus on, right? I like to look at code, and then I'm like, okay, now I understand how this works. So we're going to take a look at a code snippet very, very quickly. We have our device pointer here at the top. And here I've created an array with different feature levels. We're going from 10.1 all the way down to 9.1. So we're starting with the highest feature level and going on down. And now all I'm going to do here is when I, I'm going to go through this loop, as you can see. And when I create the device, I'm going to try to create the device going from the highest functionality to the lowest functionality. And remember again, I said create device, create device fails if you try to create, you know, too functional a device or too high a device, right? So that's that level of attempts level. That's where we're traversing that array that I showed on this slide here, going through the different feature levels. Okay? 
So that's it. That's now how you create uh, one of these new devices with the feature level. So with that, we've got our users with 10 hardware. We've got our users with 9 hardware. And now what's left is the folks who don't have WDDM uh, 1.0 capable hardware at all. And so that brings us to Direct3D Warp 10. Again, we have our application. We have the runtime. It's talking to the 10 hardware. It's talking to the 9 hardware. And now we're going to add one more thing in, which is the Direct3D 10 uh, Direct 3D Warp 10 software rasterizer. And that's all this is. It's just a fully uh, software implemented rasterizer. And our criteria for warp development um, was really two things. It had to be 100% conformant with the Direct 3D 10 spec. Again, we're getting back to, um, you know, we want that predictable experience. We want you to know how stuff is going to run all across this platform. And performance, uh, it's lots faster than RefRast. RefRast uh, is designed uh, purely for correctness, and it's actually also designed, the source code is designed to help our IHVs kind of understand our intent with some of these features, right? Now, in contrast, Warp, because we don't need to worry about, you know, uh, sort of making the code as, as human readable as possible or whatever, we can put all these optimizations in, we can write directly to assembly, we can do what we need to get it to be faster and faster. So the goal was to make it lots faster than REF because it's aimed at a different target audience and to make it fast enough for real-time use. So we're going to build on the slides that I just put up, these code slides. So this you've seen before. These were these different feature levels that we had for the create device, right? We're going to iterate through here. And of course, if we don't have a device there that any of these succeed with, we're never going to break out, right? We're going to run all the way to the end of this loop, and we won't have successfully created the device. And so then the last thing we do is we say, hey, if we didn't have success before, we're just going to create a, a D3D10 driver type software. OK. And uh, this is, I, I believe, this is the way the code looks uh, if you try and run this with the M3 build. <laughs> 